Hi, I'm Video Bob, and this is a 1974 Dodge Monaco replica of the Blues Brothers, and this is our eighth and final Bluesmobile replica. Yeah, you heard me right. This is the last one we're ever going to do, and I know I've said that before, and I always say that because we can never find any more of these cars, and I don't think I'm going to be able to find any more of them. And quite honestly, I just don't think that there's enough profit margin for us to keep doing it the way we've been doing them. Now, uh, we've done a lot of these cars over the last 10 years, and the most famous one of which is up on Route 66, up, mounted up on a pole at the Pops gas station in Joliet, Illinois. I remember we got the opportunity to meet the director, John Landis, who directed the movie Blues Brothers, and he was so happy with uh, the way we put that car up on the pole that he sent me a box of screen-used items from the movie The Blues Brothers, which you can find on a video on my channel. The way we do these cars is kind of special. The trick is to try to find one that's not completely trashed and then make it look trashed. That's really the trick. You see, the thing is, is we have to find a car that's not completely rusted out. Usually the rear quarters are completely gone. The part where you put the spare tire, you could see the road underneath it. You can get in the car and see. It's like the Flintstones. You could see the road, believe. You got to think, in 1980, when they, they made the movie, what, in 1979? And this is 1974. So the car was five years old, and it was already a rust box piece of shit. So finding these cars 45 years later or whatever, and uh, trying to get them on the road, it's pretty difficult. The Dodge Monaco wasn't a real popular car. It was a utilitarian car. They used them for police cars and taxis, and it wasn't that expensive of a car, but it came in a lot of variations. Not only could you get the Dodge Monaco, but you could also get the Plymouth Fury 3. And it came with your options of like flip-up headlights or the Brougham Edition, where it might have center trim down the middle or turn signal indicators. Maybe it had a uh, vinyl interior or maybe a paisley brocade or maybe it had a, uh, you know, velour like in one of my other ones. Came as a four-door with post, four-door hardtop or two-door hardtop. If you don't know the difference, you could get this car, let's say, as a four-door with the post and then it had a vent window here, or you could get it as a four-door without the post where it was, you know, just the glass in between, or you get it as a two-door with a little side window here as a hardtop. It came in a bunch of different variations, but the one that you want for the Bluesmobile was a CHP, California Highway Patrol, uh, police car, which was a delete car, meaning it didn't have the turn signal indicators didn't have fancy interior. Well, the thing is, those, are, those cars are gone. They're just gone. You can't find those. So the only ones you could find are generally the Brougham editions that are nicer. And sometimes you have to change out the front clip. You have to change the headlights, the taillights, and you have to do all this stuff. Now, it's really difficult to do, and it's just not worth the money because people aren't willing to pay the kind of money that it would take to do that. All right, let's talk about how shitty this car is or isn't. We take a car at 74 Monaco, and first we have to restore it. We have to fix any of the rust, fix any of the problems with it. If that means doing the brakes, the shocks, engine, carburetor, all that stuff, right? Then we have to make it look like hell, like it did in the movie. So you're looking at this car and you're thinking, gee, what a rusty piece of crap. Well, it's not really a rusty piece of crap. All the rust that you see on here is fake. We painted it on. You know, the rust that's under these door handles and all that, we painted all that on. So what we do is first sand the car down, primer the car, then we paint it in layers, and then we use vinyl stencils for the numbers and the police and, and, and all these things, and then we'll paint another layer on, then we sand the layer off, and then we paint on dirt. So it's a multi-step process to do the car correctly because you got to remember, the car in the movie was an old Mount Prospect police car. So it started off as a shiny, nice police car that got worn down over the years. A lot of the other prop builders out there, they try to fake that by putting up vinyl stickers and things like that, and, or they just have a genuinely shitty car. So the trick to doing the movie replicas like we do is to paint movie rust on it and to make it actually a good car when in reality, uh, you know, it's in reality a good car, but to make it look crappy. So just as a point of reference, this car sold for about $25,000. That's what it cost to work on this car for like, I think three or four months we put into this thing. Ah, but it came out great. Now this car has the taillights 
of the general purpose Dodge. But I think it came with the Brougham lights, which were a little different, which have like an eagle here, and then they put the reverse lights here. So we had to make this panel to fill this area, which is actually the fuel filler. And uh, we had to make it look like the delete car. So we had to find these tail lights and things. And it has another little party trick. Let's take a look at the license plate from the movie, BDR 529. If you're a big Dan Aykroyd fan, you may have heard him tell the story about his motorcycle group, the Black Diamond Riders. The address was 529. He sneaks this little license plate in all of the movies that he does. If you look carefully, you'll find it. But this was the license plate on the Blues Brothers. And we take one of uh, our, our buddy, uh, Travis Bell, from uh, Celebrity Machines makes these plates and they don't look like this. We make them all dirty and rusty like that. And Travis, you should, you should do a rusty version of it. <laughs> Just a suggestion. But anyway, this is what we do. And you wanna be able to drive around with that plate, but you also wanna have your legal plate on. So what we did was we installed this little license plate flipper mechanism so that with a uh, flick of the remote, you put your real license plate on there, you can drive around, not get in any trouble. Then when you get to the car show or wherever you're going, Bang, you got your BDR-529 plate on there. And because this registers as an antique, you only need the one plate in the back. Just something that we do, and that's why we're the prop shop. The interior of this thing was like a hideous green. We had to redo the whole car. Um, and what we do is we had all the seats reupholstered, headliner redone, new carpet put in. We use a custom vinyl type of paint. Uh, to paint the other interior panels and then what we did with this car is we actually went out and found other interior panels from another car That were the right color. I think the interior of this thing came out beautifully. It actually is way too nice uh, Because it's way too nice for a bluesmobile, but um, it's been about three thousand dollars doing the interior and I think it was worth it It came out great Again perfect interior We wanted this to stay all original original radio in the Blues Brothers, they had cut a hole in here and stuck an 8-track into the vent. And uh, unfortunately, the cigarette lighter does work. So we did fix it. Pretty amazing. But really good job. And you know what? The clock, the clock works. This clock works. Let me see if we can get in there if you hear it. Can you hear it? It's ticking. People love to quote lines from the movie, and one of the ones they talk about is how he talks about the engine, which was a 440 cubic inch plant. Well, this is not the 440, although we made it look like it is. It's actually, I think this is either the 400 or the 360, I gotta remember. But we went through this thing, put in a three row aluminum champion radiator, new hoses, new belts, plugs, wires, distributor, brake, master cylinder, battery, all the stuff that you need just to get this thing going down the road. The great thing about it is it glides like a Cadillac. The suspension in this thing is fantastic. You know, there's so many crappy roads here in Dallas that, you know, you get going and you realize back in the 70s, cars like this could glide over those kind of speed bumps, or, you know, those potholes and things, and it wasn't a big deal. So it is a good cruising car. It's a slab. You could land a helicopter on the hood of this thing. Well, like I said, I don't think we're going to be doing any more of these because we just can't find these cars. They're too hard to find. Like the keys. Where are the keys? Ah, they're there. Just can't find these cars anymore. And I don't know if people are going to be willing to pay $40,000, $50,000 for one. Maybe if they are, then we'll keep doing them. But in the meantime, I think this is it for the Bluesmobiles. It's 106 miles to Chicago. We got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes. It's dark and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it.
almost forgot the camera. 